welcome you to our worship this morning. Uh, if you're a guest with us, we ask you please sign the guest book. It's by the front doors, and if you're looking for a church home, we'd love to be, have you be part of us here. Just let us know with a phone number and email, and we will get back to you. Just a couple of announcements. Our Lenten service this Wednesday will be at 7 o'clock with a, a supper at 6, so come for the supper and then our Lenten service. Just an informational note, uh, starting this Sunday at 9 o'clock, our church service will be on, our, on the Community Access Channel. For those that have Mid-Continent, it will be on Channel 12 at 9 o'clock this evening, and it should be every week from here on at 9 o'clock on Sunday evenings. That was the earliest spot that we could get, and so if you're unable to come, that'd be a good way to worship. On a sad note, Joel Saudi passed away last evening, I think about right around 6 o'clock. His service, funeral service is pending. We remember uh, Joel's children and, and Gloria and our prayers and Jerry, who spent a lot of time with Joel. I mean, you, Jerry, you're almost like his son, too. And so we pray for the families and, and pray that God will comfort them with the promise of eternal life. Just a note about Marilyn, our organist. She fell here a couple of weeks ago in the church here, and she broke her collarbone. And uh, Pam talked to her this week, and she's able now to use her arm a little bit. So we remember her also in our prayers. And Colleen is our pianist this morning. So thank you, Colleen. Robin has a couple of announcements. Most of these are old announcements, but I just got to keep hitting them to you so you can remember them and do what we're needing help with. The new address book, that's that orange one that has your addresses, phone numbers, emails, so forth in, is um, not quite on the press, but it's getting ready. And so we want to make sure that everyone out there has made sure that their phone numbers are all accurate, their names and their addresses, everything's ready. If you have a change in the last four years, let Pam or myself know and we'll make sure it gets in there so we have a good up-to-date book. The Heaven's Helpers list that's in your bulletin this morning, we're doing this for a gift to Heaven's Helpers Soup Cafe during Lent. So if you could bring something off of that list, it's all things that they don't get as donations usually. It's things they use all the time and are needing of it, but it's things that they end up having to buy. So if we can help them out in that way, that would help them and it would help us feel good about helping in our community. And we're having communion today. For those of you that are watching online, if you'd like to get some bread, crackers, juice, or wine ready for that time in the service, you can commune with us. That is all. Thank you. Would the congregation please rise and turn to page two of our bulletin for a brief order for confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us have a brief silence for reflection and self-examination. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us 
so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for each of us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening song, Wash, O God, Our Sons and Daughters, you'll find on page 16 of your bulletin. If you would, please take out your, your bulletin, open the front cover, and there is um, a, just the refrain that um, we're asking you to join us if you'd like to.
please come forward. <laughs> Anyone else? Good morning. Good morning. Do you like the cold? The snow? Do you like the snow? No, I don't either. You do? All right, this morning, Robin is going to talk to you. Do you know Robin? Right here? Yeah, she's going to talk to you this morning. Good morning. This time right now that we are in, in the church, is called Lent. Do you know what Lent is? It's a time between now and Easter. And we think about what Jesus did on the cross. So sometimes when we are in Lent, some people give things up. And they give up like candy until Easter, or pop, or hamburgers at McDonald's, and different things. So what could you give up for Lent? What would you give up? Yes. Not eating at a restaurant during Lent? That's a good one. Anybody else? Could you give up candy? How about pop? Can you give up pop? Yeah? Well, you guys are good. I'm not that, quite that good. So I was thinking maybe we could do something instead of giving up, maybe we could give something during Lent. Would that be a good idea? And so, so I'm thinking last year, we as kids all got barns and we gave our change and put it in the barns and then we gave it to some kids that didn't have much to eat. The money, we bought some pigs and we bought some chickens and goats and gave it to some kids in another land. So today, hmm, today we have some visitors, it looks like. I think I know you. Yes, I came back to tell you thank you for what you kids did for my family last year. With the money we shared with us, you shared with us, we got some chickens and two goats. The chickens lay eggs and we eat some every day. And we sell eggs to others in our village. We use that money for seeds to plant our garden, going to the doctor and school books. The goats give us milk to drink and milk to sell. You helped us, us so much. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, that's good to see you again, Ola. And who do you have with you? This is my new friend, Augie. Hi, Augie. I was selling eggs on the street, and I saw him looking for food, just like I was doing last year. I gave him some of our eggs for his family, and I asked him to come with me because I wanted to thank someone. I have an idea. Last year, we helped o Ola. Maybe we could help Augie this year. You think? Would you guys want to help Augie get some chickens for his family so he can have food to eat and money to spend on the doctor and school and stuff? Would you be willing? That's yes or no. Would you want to help? Yeah. Okay. So I have barns with me today. I can give each one of you a barn and you can take it home and put it together and then you can put your change in there. And on Easter, we'll bring it back. We'll dump it into our big pail that we had other years. We'll count it, and we'll see how many chickens we can buy for, for Ollie's, Ola's family. Okay? We're going to say a prayer, and then I'm going to pass out some stickers and coloring books and the barns. And I also have... A few years ago, we had this pig, and we had a contest, and we named it, and it ended up being Petunia the Pig. <laughs> so we're going to put this in the back, and if moms and dads or grandpas and grandmas or anybody want to help us out, they can just put their money inside of Petunia, okay? I know how to do it. You do? Yeah. You can paint them, yep. I got some stickers you can put on too, yeah. You can decorate them because you bring them back and we'll see what a good job you did, okay? Okay, Pastor Allen's going to say a prayer about this project we're going to do. 
and then I'll give you the, the thanks and you can go to Sunday school, okay? Okay, let's pray. You bow your heads, fold your hands, and close your eyes, okay? Dear God, we thank you for giving us what we need to live and extra so that we can share it with people who don't have as much as we have. We ask, O oh God, that you would be with us, that you would lead us, and that you would lead us to help others. We ask this in your name. Amen. Thank you for coming today, Ola, to thank us for what we did for you last year, and we hope we can do just as good for your friend, Augie. Okay? If you would please stand and join me as we continue at the top of page 3. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, be with you. And also with you. Please join me in the prayer of the day and the responsive reading of the 121st Psalm. O God, our leader and guide, in the waters of baptism you bring us to new birth to live as your children. Strengthen our faith in your promises that by your spirit we may lift up your life to all the world through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord. The maker of heaven and earth. The Lord will not let your foot be moved. Nor will the one who walks over you fall asleep. Behold. The keeper of Israel. Will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day. Nor the moon by night. The Lord will preserve you from all evil. And will keep your life. The Lord will watch over your going out and your coming in. From this time forth, forevermore. Please be seated for the readings. 
first reading today is from Genesis 12, 1 through 4a. God call, God's call of Abram and Sari was a clear purpose that through all, them all the families of the earth would gain a blessing. And as they set out on their journey, they all accompanied by promises of land, nation, and great reputation. The Lord said to Abram, Go to your country and your kindred in your father's house to this land, and I will show you. I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse, and in, your, and in your, all your families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Our second lesson for today is from Romans 1 through 5, 13 through 17. In the person and example of Abram, Abraham, we discover that a right relationship with God does not involve earning or reward from God, but, from, but entails trusting God's promise. Abram is for the forebearer and model of both the Jews and Gentiles because we trust that ours is a God who gives us life up to the dead. What then are we to say was gained by Abram, our ancestor according to the flesh? For if Abram was justified by works, he was something to boast about, but not before God. For what does Scripture say? Abram believed God, and it reckoned to him as righteous. righteousness. Now to one who works, wages are not reckoned as a gift, but as something due. But to one who works trusts him who justifies the ungodly, such faith is reckoned and righteous. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abram or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the, if it is the inheritance of the law who are of their heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but there are is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith in order that the promises made, promises may rest on grace be guaranteed to all descendants. Not all do the inheritance of the law, but all, also those who share the faith of Abram. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of my nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life and death and calls into ex existence the things that do not exist. Here in reading. The Holy Gospel according to John, the third chapter. As I read this lesson, in it comes the most famous verse in all of the Bible, John 3.16. It's really what the Bible is all about, God loving us. And it comes in a conversation with a religious leader named Nicodemus. Nicodemus. A reading from John. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God with be, without being born from above. Nicodemus said to Jesus, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time in the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, 
and what is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to Jesus, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son in the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. You, you may be seated. Let us all pray. Lord God, you came to this world because of the love you have for us. You provide for us. Most of the time you provide more than we need. And you ask us to share what we have with those who don't have enough for themselves. But mainly, Lord, you taught us who God is. And you went to the cross so that we can spend eternity with you. We ask, O oh Lord, during this Lenten season that we take time to think about what you went through, the agony and all the hurt that you, you faced on our account. Help us, O oh Lord, to thank you for what you have done for us. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. When Richard Nixon ran for president in 1968, the Vietnam War was at its height. It was during that time when one of Nixon's TV commercials showed a picture of an American soldier in Vietnam and as they showed him, on his helmet was the word love. This image bothered one of Nixon's media people, and so he told Nixon, that picture really bothers me because it will remind people of hippies, those who want to live with no responsibility. Well, it was about a week later, a letter arrived in the mail from the mother of that soldier. She wrote how thrilled she was to see the picture of her son on that TV commercial, and she wondered if she could have a copy of it. The letter was signed, Mrs. William Love. This soldier was not making a statement about his feelings. He was simply putting his name on his helmet. When we think about Jesus as he hung on the cross, he was not wearing a helmet. He was wearing a crown of thorns. And above his head, there was no name. There was only a sign, a sign that said, King of the Jews. And yet there is another sign. It comes in the form of a statement, a statement that is unsaid about the nature of love. 
So what is love? When we think of God's love for us, it is Jesus giving his life, giving his life for a sinful world. That's love in its purest form. That is love with no holds barred. Love that asks for nothing in return. Jesus' words in John 3.16 tell us about God's love very well. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him, whoever puts their trust in him, will have eternal life. Jesus came to live and to die so that you and I can have the life that God intended for us, to live in harmony with us and with one another ever since he created the world. He longs for us to have a life where we will never have to deal with disappointment or disease or hurt. A life where violence and hatred will never be found A life where there is no sin to destroy us. A life of peace and harmony. A life that is joyful. Maybe as you think about God's love, you know that's true. But it seems so far away. So distant. Maybe you feel loneliness or sadness or fear. Maybe you feel abandonment at the loss of a loved one, or when you are dealing with disease. Maybe you prayed for peace or something that you have longed for deep in your heart, and it seems like God isn't hearing your prayers. That's the great thing about God's love. It doesn't depend on us. It doesn't depend on how we feel or how we ask. He always hears our prayers. And he's with us every step of the way of our lives. Billy Graham, the great evangelist, tells a story about a young man who attended one of his crusades. This man was confined to a wheelchair. The young man was suffering in the last stages of cancer. It was a dark night for this young man. He was filled with bitterness and anger. He had read many books promising health to believers, but he continued to get sicker and sicker. His parents had taken him from one faith healer to another, and each one of them prayed for his healing. The young man prayed and fasted, and he sincerely believed that God would heal him, but nothing happened. Instead, he was dying, dying more each day. Graham's crusade was the last meeting that this young man would attend. At the crusade that night, it was youth night. And the speaker was Johnny Erickson. Many of you know her story. At the age of 17, Johnny was paralyzed in a diving accident. She too prayed for healing. Yet she remained in that wheelchair as a quadriplegic. That night sitting there in her wheelchair, Johnny spoke about her early anger at remaining crippled after praying and believing a miracle would happen. And a miracle did take place, but not the one she had been praying for. Instead, God met her in her pain and gave her life new meaning and a new direction in spite of her suffering and disappointment. Johnny's honesty that night set the dying man free. He was able to let go of his anger and bitterness, and he stopped seeing himself as one 
who didn't have enough faith or not praying hard enough. Instead, he came to Jesus in a new way. Not long after the crusade, the young man died. But even though this young man passed away, his parents were able to rejoice because he did not die angry and bitter. He died full of hope, knowing that God would care for him. He was set free from his dark soul, and he experienced new life. As we look at the cross, we see love in its purest form. Because with Jesus, there is healing and life. When we look at the cross, we discover a God who loves and cares deeply for each one of us. A God who carries each one of us in his heart and was even willing to give his life so that we are able to spend eternity with him and our loved ones. Yes, God made a statement on the cross over 2,000 years ago. There were two signs that hung above his head. The unbelieving world saw only one. It read, King of the Jews. But for those who know Jesus and see him with no sin hanging there on that cross, they see love. Love for all of his people. And this is love. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that whoever believes in him will not perish but will have everlasting life. Dear friends, accept that love and lay your deepest concerns before Jesus at the foot of the cross. Amen. Our song is on page 17 of your bulletin. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. You'll find them on the bottom of page 7 in your bulletin. Please rise as we share our faith together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. 
He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us all pray. Lord God, guide and nurture all who long for your presence, that we may be strengthened by the unending love of your Son, Jesus, God of our salvation. O God, bring understanding and peace so that we may live together in harmony and work on behalf of the poor. God of our salvation. Lord God, protect and support refugees and all who travel to foreign lands and empower the ministry of those who provide hospitality and safety to strangers. Lord, in your mercy. Watch over those troubled in mind, body, and spirit, those who are dying and their caregivers, that they may know your love and compassion. God of our salvation. O oh God, help us in our discipline of fasting and abstaining, uh, abstaining, abstaining from those things that separate us from you, that we may be renewed by your grace alone and discover your gifts. God of your salvation. O oh God, we remember before you those who have died. Gather us at last with them into the kingdom of heaven. God of salvation. Lord God, listen now as we pray our personal prayers in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers and grant us your mercy, O God. In the name of the crucified and risen one, Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share the peace of the Lord with one another. Would you rise and turn to page 8 of our bulletin, 
for our offering response, Create in Me. begin our communion service with a prayer on the top of page 9. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new promise in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us all pray together the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The congregation may be seated. You're all welcome to our meal. This is God's meal, and he invites us all. You don't have to belong to this congregation or be Lutheran. Jesus gives his meal for all of us and invites us all to come. Today we'll be taking our communion uh, continuously. Come up the middle aisle, take your communion, and go along the wall aisle. Come, for the meal is prepared and is ready.
For those of you on our live stream this, this morning, we will take a, our communion now. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for your sins. Would the congregation please rise? And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing song you'll find on page 18 of your bulletin, Lift High the Cross. <laughs>